Hello friends, welcome into the Cowboys Report presented by Wager Talk. I am your host, Tom Downey. Hey, the draft's over, but we're not going anywhere. Not even once the season begins. We're going to be here all year long on the Cowboys Report, breaking down the latest rumors and news. First up, I got a lot of tweets about it. I know you guys are, are a little, maybe a little bit concerned, but are the Cowboys planning to let Zeke walk? Let, let's slow everybody's roll here. Pro Football Talk. Just the one star on this one. Here's why. Yes, the Cowboys drafted Tony Pollard and Mike Weber, but if you guys watch the show, I know you all do, you know this. The Cowboys' selection of Pollard and Weber were about keeping Zeke fresh. Pro Football Talk, who, by the way, tried to kickstart the Zeke's going to hold out stuff, is wondering, well, is this the Cowboys' plan to replace Zeke down the road? That is not the Cowboys' plan. Now, I gave it one star because, you know, maybe something changes. Maybe Zeke gets hurt or something really out there, but the Cowboys' plan right now is not to take Tony Pollard and Mike Weber in late round four and round seven and have that be the Ezekiel Elliott replacement. The plan right now is to extend Zeke. Now, look, this is how this has gone so far. Florio says Zeke could hold out, then Zeke doesn't hold out. Everybody, you, me, everyone else out there says the Cowboys need depth behind Zeke. The Cowboys take that depth behind Zeke, and Florio says, well, maybe Zeke's going to leave. I, we're jumping to a lot of conclusions here on this front. So, no, the Cowboys selection of Tony Pollard and, and Mike Weber are not about replacing Zeke. It's far more about giving the Cowboys depth behind Zeke so they don't have to give him the ball 400 times again this year. So, I think I know the answer here. But should the Cowboys extend Zeke Elliott type Y for yes type N for no? I don't think it needs to even get done this year. You can wait because, frankly, given when their contracts end, Amari Cooper, Dak Prescott, heck, maybe even Byron Jones, a little bit higher on the food chain for Zeke Elliott because he's locked in for this year and the next coming season. Now, part of the reason I gave that one star was because the Cowboys do need to reduce Zeke's touches or his long-term body is just not going to hold up. So I'll give this one two stars. Will the Cowboys actually reduce Elliott's touches? I hope so. They need to. They can't go into next year having given Zeke another 375 or more touches in 2019. And the Cowboys do want to keep Zeke fresh long term. Then again, that's exactly what they did way back when when they had Emmett Smith, who was about the same age as Zeke. And by the way, they drafted a second-round player named Sherman Williams, and that never really materialized. So for me, this does kind of fall into the I'll believe it when I see it category. I hope the Cowboys do reduce Zeke's touches. I say this, by the way, as a Zeke Elliott dynasty fantasy owner. But the Cowboys, if you want to extend Elliott, you cannot run him into the ground over the next two years. You need to cut back as much as a little bit. Maybe instead of 375, maybe it's a little bit under 300 even. That's still a pretty hefty workload, but you've got to find a way to not run Zeke into the ground. He's been healthy for the Cowboys, but the bumps and bruises have been there. At a certain point, the wear and tear for almost all players, unless your name was like Frank Gore, does tend to catch up to you. So keep an eye on that. I think Zeke's going to be okay long term. I think the plan is to extend him, but they've got to make sure that they find a way to actually reduce his touches. Otherwise, you're going to end up in a girly situation where all of a sudden he's hurt early on in the in his new contract. Now, today's show is brought to you guys by Wager Talk. We know you made some money with BetDSI. Make some more. Wager Talk is giving out a free daily pick package from their experts. So they'll give you the free pick package there. You go put some money down there and make some added money. But that's only available if you go to wagertalk.com slash chat sports. That is the only way to get the free pick package from Wager Talk. No credit card, no money down. Wagertalk.com slash chat sports. Some more Cowboys rumors and news here. Next up is Connor Williams going to move to right tackle this season. We mentioned earlier in the week that he's going to move probably at some point. What about this year? I'll give it two stars. I do kind of like the idea quite a bit. I think it makes sense for the Cowboys. But Dallas Morning News says Williams is probably going to stay at left guard. Jerry Jones, though, says maybe they cross-train Connor Williams, which I think makes the most sense. Look, if your plan, and I hope you have a long-term plan, is to put Connor Williams at right tackle in 2020. Get him some reps now. That, that transition from left guard to right tackle, that's not an easy move. 
So if you do that now, that's going to help set you up in the long term. Now, I still think with the way this roster is set up, there is an argument to be made that Layel at right tackle and Williams or even Connor McGovern, we'll get to that in a minute, at left guard makes the most sense. But it, I think with the way this roster is set up, because you spent a, early, a third round pick on McGovern, who is a good player, I think at least we'll see how he plays in the preseason and all that. You can justify letting Connor Williams get some reps at right tackle. And this, the draft pick of McGovern was a future move. I know we're trying to win right now, and the Cowboys definitely should be trying to win right now. But at least try Connor Williams out at right tackle some this preseason. See how he looks. I think that's what makes the most sense for the long term. Now, assuming Collins stays at right tackle... Who should start at left guard? Give me an M for Connor McGovern and a W for Williams. Now, you guys know how high I've been on Connor Williams coming out of the NFL draft, how much I love that pick, and my high expectations for him. But there's no reason at all to not let McGovern compete for that left guard role. And if he's better than Williams, I've got no problem with it. Maybe that's a surprise to many of you, given how much I've defended C. Will. I still think he's going to be a long-term option. But... I am okay if, with it if McGovern wins the left job or left left guard job and Williams becomes your go-to versatile swing piece on the interior and on the outside of the offensive line. Just make sure you're at least giving Williams some of those right tackle reps because, as I said before, I am now on the train of move Connor Williams to right tackle. Speaking of offensive line, some more discussion here. Is Mitch Hyatt going to make the roster? I'm going to give this one two stars. Out of all the undrafted free agents, Hyatt definitely has some of the best chance to actually make the roster. And you can often tell how a team feels about an undrafted free agent by the money they paid him. They guaranteed Hyatt in terms of signing bonus and his base salary 150 k They're paying that no matter what on the cap. That's a pretty big bonus in, in this day and age for any undrafted free agent. That is a clear sign that the Cowboys really like Mitch Hyatt. Now look. He was not worthy of the two-time All-American nod he got at college football, but he was definitely worthy of being a mid-to-late round draft pick. I was kind of surprised he went undrafted. The biggest thing for Hyatt, there's a bit of a log jam right now on the Cowboys' offensive line. They go 10 deep in all reality. I can't remember the last time the Cowboys truly carried 10 offensive linemen. Now, assuming there is no trade of Collins, that leaves maybe Mitch Hyatt and Xavier Suofilo battling? For that, along with, with, with Redmond too, battling for that 8th, ninth, 10th spot. Maybe they carry 8, maybe they carry 9. And looking ahead, Hyatt, in theory, could be here longer than everybody else because the, the Cowboys are going to control his rights. So if you believe in Mitch Hyatt as a swing tackle and you're, and you're the Dallas Cowboys, you're probably not going to try and stash him on the practice squad. Instead, maybe you're trying to keep him as that 54 or 53rd or 52nd player overall on your roster. So that's going to be a key battle leading in throughout the preseason between Hyatt, Suofilo, Redmond, I think, because Looney, I think, is safe, Fleming, I think, is safe, as to who's going to be that 8th or even ninth man on the offensive line. Next up, speaking of roster battles, is it now or never for Taco Charlton? I'm going to give this one three stars. I, I think that's where we sit right now with Taco. We've mentioned this quite a bit before. Now, there are there are some scenarios where players have struggled for the first three or even four or five years and then hit afterwards, but the third year is always kind of the make or break or even just the outright breakout year for any player in the NFL. He's had two years. Injuries have been a factor, especially last season. But my concern for Taco is can even get on the field. I mean, that the, look, the Cowboys' defensive end and defensive line depth is really good right now. If he's healthy, you're not going to really want to pull DeMarcus Lawrence off the field. You're not going to want to pull Robert Quinn off the field, for the most part, on passing downs. Tyrone Crawford, well, he's been a reliable veteran for you. We'll see about Randy Gregory, you know? So that leaves uh, two spots, I think, at most, between Taco Charlton, Dorrance Armstrong, Jalen Jelks, and, and Joe Jackson. And then you got Kerry Hyder in there too. So it is kind of approaching now or never for Taco Charlton. If he is the odd man out come the end of the preseason, I would not be surprised if there are at least trade talks around Charlton because there's so much depth. All those guys have some level of value. All right, question for you guys. Over or under four sacks this season for Taco Charlton. Type O for under, or O for over. Wow, that's totally wrong. O for over, and U for under. I picked four in particular, by the way, because that's what Taco's had in his career. 
So will he meet or surpass his sack total this year? O for over, U for under. One last rumor for you guys. Are the Cowboys going to be better in 2019 at least, should they? I'll give this one three stars. Jerry Jones chiming in, and there's a lot of, you know, rationality to his quote. Here it is. Everything we were was about improving from where we were this from this time last year. There is no reason why they shouldn't be. There is no tangible reason we shouldn't be expected to be better than last year. And for the most part, Jerry's right here. You should be better or at least the same on the coaching staff. In theory, Linehan being gone is an upgrade. And the offseason roster moves, I thought, at worst, were lateral. Yes, you lose Cole Beasley. Yes, you lose Jeff Swain. Damian Wilson leaves, whatever. David Irving leaves. Terrence Williams. But you bring in Randall Cobb. You bring in Christian Covington. George I. Loka comes in. Tristan Hill, the rest of the draft picks and UDFAs. Jason Witten, too, if you want to, if you want to include him, although he's kind of a, on a return addition. I'm not sure how to, how to categorize here. Jason Witten. But I gave it only three stars for one big, I guess two reasons. Number one, the schedule's a lot tougher this year. It's not going to be as easy. So the Cowboys could be a better overall team, but the record might only be the same or even worse potentially. And the other big reason, kind of coming off this point, just because you're a better team, the record doesn't always indicate that. So what will be the Cowboys record in 2019? And of course, I'm ignoring possibilities for injuries and unexpected events that really you can't even fault the team for. So what will be the Cowboys record in the 2019 season? Let me know in the comment section. I've said it before, it has not changed. I think the expectation minimum is going to be in that 10 and 6 range, which could be, maybe should be enough to win the NFC East. And if it's less than that, Things do not bode well for Jason Garrett long term. So let me know in the comment section what will be the Cowboys record in 2019. Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.